Hey Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to the shop. Got a little something to go over today. Recently we did a wine bottle stopper and I used a Ruth Niles, Ruth Niles, um, stainless steel bottle stopper. Well I used her mandrel and I used a pallet drill and all that came from Ruth. Uh, and, it got, and I was saying draw bar. I must have got 10 phone calls today about asking what in the hell is a draw bar. Well, that's what I want to know. What the hell is a draw bar? So, I went to the shop. That's where I'm at now. Remember? That's where we're Okay. And I got a draw bar. And I want to explain how it works. All you have to do is stay right where, well, wherever you are. Stay right where you are and, and, and watch. Now, I've heard from Turners over the years who used to be, or are, machinists, or from the machining world. And they tell me that a lot of things we talk about relate back to machinists, but machinists are a lot exact. They take a little bit of fine cuts, they wear little goggles with, you know, these, these things, these cheater peeps, so you can see, well, we rough it in a little bit more than that. But a lot of what we do is the same as what machining is. So let's talk about what a drawbar is. I'm holding a collar chuck. Now let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm holding and why. This is a collar chuck. You see this? This slides into my number two Morse taper. All right. This coming out the back of it, that is a drawbar. And that is the lock knob that comes with this. You see the combination of events, of things. You see the slots right there? One, two, three slots. They're in the collet. Whoop, let me get up here and see it. Right there. See them? All right. Now that is slightly more than a 3 8 inch doll. Slightly more. I mean, yeah, yeah. when it goes in, it's going to go in snug. So that's what determines the size of my collet. I've got them in quarter, 3 8 half, 5 8 3 quarter. That's a big mother. And I've got a whole set of Beal collets that open and close into wood uh, because it's a great way to hold something. And my factum is if I can hold it, I can turn it. I think I've just glued myself to the floor. Hold on. Sometimes when you think the crazy people are not among us, we're here. I was putting some CA on a project I'm showing you in a minute and it dripped on a floor mat. And then I sat down and my right foot went into the floor mat. What I was having a problem with is I was coming off the bench because I couldn't get my leg underneath me because I glued myself to the floor mat. All right, let's go back to this. Here's my collet. Now, I want to slip a piece in here of 3 8 inch doll. This is a 3 8 inch collet. I got this from littlemachineshop.com. I like those folks. All right? Because then you can buy the size you want or you buy a kit. But they'll work with you, all right? And I've had this for maybe 15 years or more. Now it's pitted up, it's a little rusted, it's got some some uh, rusting on it. All I do is lightly sand this down with about a 320 pad and clean it up. And that takes the heavy, heavy stuff off. And I've got guys tell me, if you use such and such, you can do this and this and this. I use a 320 pad and I think I do pretty good. So I'm going to leave it on that 320 pad. All right. Now, another guy suggested, why don't you lube them and then they won't rust? Think about that for a minute. This is a friction fit collet. Friction fit collet. If I lube it and it spins, it will no longer be a friction fit collet. It would be a non-friction fit collet, which they don't have those in the catalog. So don't lube them. Don't wax them. Don't oil them. Just clean them. Now you get done if you feel like it and you want to spray some of that two-letter stuff on it to keep the, the rust off. That's fine. But you got to clean it all off before you use it. And don't ever stick it in your headstock when it's got lubricants on it because that's going to mess up the other part of your, 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 uh, your, your, your Morse taper. Okay, now. We've got a collet chuck, a draw bar, a lock knob. What happens here is this goes 
this comes off, this is the collet. This collet comes off, we slip this into our one way, our, our Morse taper center, and then we bring the rod up through the back, sneaky bastards, aren't we? And then we thread it in. Now, all I need about two good turns on it. That's going to keep this from pulling out, right? Okay, now this is going to keep it from pulling out. When I hang this down to the flywheel on the far side, furthest left side of the lathe, when I tighten this down, it's going to pull the drawbar back. That's going to pull this back. That's going to lock down my collet. So, if I put a 3 8 inch hardwood dowel in here with a block on it to turn a, a bottle stopper, Christmas tree light, i got a quarter inch one that's sweet for Christmas tree lights, um, all that stuff, then when I want to fray it up, all I do is back off this a little bit, slap this with my wrench. This pops out a little bit, takes the friction off, allows it to open up a little bit, and I pull a piece off, slide a new one in, and go the other way around, turn it back down again. It doesn't crush the dowel. The, the, a lot of the chucks have so much force they'll crush the dowel and this, this, no, not this, remember, it's this, ah, it's screw it up. So you don't want that. All you want to do is hold it. Now, when I'm talking about the Ruth Niles project, which I am, I'm doing about Ruth Niles bottle stoppers, I'm using her collet or her, uh, little, uh, mandrel. I'm using her little mandra when I learn which button is off and which one is zoom in and out. Okay, this is the, the mandra made by Ruth Niles. You see that? 3 8 inch 16 bolt sticking out on one end, right over here. Number two Morse taper sticking out the other end. And it is drilled for a quarter 20 draw bar. You able to see that? Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. See the threads in there? You know, we're going to do the same thing with this, but first, we're going to clean our number two Morse taper on the lathe using this gizmo. It's a Morse taper cleaner. They're in catalogs, and I can't tell you which catalog because last time I did, all of a sudden it was gone. Then it showed up in another one of those brand name catalogs. I go to Craft Supplies, PSI, and Granger, and I mean, uh, Rockler and a few others. I don't, I don't shop all the sales. Might be available at LittleMachineShop.com. It's just made for cleaning out the number two Morse taper. And you got to get the right size. You just put it in. Do you hear it? Hit those sound effects. I put it in there, and now that ta that thing has cleaned out the surface crud and grime, and moved it off out the way. Why? I want that clean. Why can't I stick a, a wire brush in there? You don't want it. You don't want it scarred. Why can't I sand it? You don't want it. You don't want it scarred. Why can't it? You don't want it. You don't want it scarred. You got that? Pretty simple. This cleans it. It's a simple little device. It's like five bucks in the catalogs. It'll save you life. Morse taper goes in. We get it down in there. Just, just snug. Then we go to the other end and we take this quarter 20 rod that I've got. I bought this as a hardware stroll a little while ago. I bullet nosed the end of it. That's so that I don't mess up the threads. And it did that on, on a bench grind right there. And then I put a quarter 20 stay knot. See the little spin around knot? And then I put two quarter 20s on the end over here to keep them from coming off. So I back it up and turn it. And it, don't, it, don't, it doesn't come on loose. Think about it for a little bit. All right, don't wax it. Right now, I want to line this up. It is threading into the bottom of the number two Morse taper, into the bottom of the stopper. Then we're going to bring the nut up and tighten the nut down. Now, what did that do? Nothing happened over here. Nothing happened, except that number two Morse taper went into that headstock and was received and is being held in place. So now if I'm doing something like a knob or a fluted piece or whatever on that 3 8 inch, and this is a handy mandrel, don't, don't forget this, more than, more than bottle stoppers. If I'm doing something like this and make it a cut this way, uh, opposite, I'm not going to pull it off. It's going to go right where I want it to. 
That's you calling with an order. I gotta go take your order. Okay, that was one of you guys calling about an order. And when you do call Big Eye Productions at 504-715-0512, I'm the guy you normally talk to. Unless we're driving. I don't talk on the phone when I'm driving. At all. It's extremely distracting. I only have half a brain. Um, so my wife will answer the phone with me. Or it'll go to voicemail. Leave me a message. I will call you back. Unless you're the guy trying to sell me some insurance on my car. Reduce my student loans. Give me an extended warranty on the car. There's like two other favorite ones. Unless you're one of those guys, I'll call you back. You don't you didn't have pack. I'm not calling you back. Okay, let's get back on this. Oh, the reason I gotta answer the phone is we are a very small operation. So small it is myself and the boss. She packs the orders, prints them, takes them to the post office. Seven days a week we go to the post office with orders. Nothing sits and waits. Seven days a week we go to the post office and do the drop. In the box, we, we talk to the people there, we know what time to get it in, so we get it processed and get out of here. If you've got something, you need something, you give us a call, we'll take care of it. I'm back on this mandrel with Ruth Niles, and the, that website for Ruth Niles is right here. It's an awesome little website, and on there you'll find her phone number, you can call her. Uh, I do find out, I did find out, she won't send you cookies, but she'll send you some of the finest work you've ever seen. Some of the finest bottle stoppers and mandrels and parts and pieces and all that. That's what she's got, and she'll, she'll share that with you. But we're back on this. When I first got this mandrel, I only turned a wine bottle stopper. Then one day, I needed the top for a cane, and it was going to screw into a 3 8 inch rod sticking up out of a Cabello's cane. And I thought, well, that's three eighths, and that's three eighths. I can work like that. That's three eighths, that's three eighths. So I put that knob on this mandrel, spun it on, locked it down, and it gave me a stable place to work. I wasn't between centers, it didn't have to be between the centers. I started the rough and end between centers, not to get any brazons to knock it off. And then when I got done, I could just unthread it off this, seal it, thread it back with the other one, and it was done. So. You can do that with this type of mandrel, with this type of mandrel. Also small jars, a vase, um, I did a reverse, I love reverse chucking and, and flip flopping things. When you do a lid on a jar to turn it around and grab it again, to put decorations on or whatever, you can thread a piece of wood on there. A piece of junk wood, a piece of Ronnie's 2x2. Two and you can shape it, turn it up to speed, shape it, and you can make it fit right into the lid or right into the cover. So you're holding it wood on wood. Boy, that thing is a savior. Really? All right, now, I've tightened down the knot on this end. I pulled it back in there. I want to keep this end tight, and I want to have that lock knot on it because I don't want anything sticking too far out over here that may get a warp or how You see that little thing? See how that's going? That, that arm? All right. If it's not centered, it will do that. And guess what? That vibration will go clean through the headstock and come out on this side and give you a mark, a chatter. It will. Very disappointing when you turn in and everything's got the same chatter to it. So, suck it up tight, get it straight, run it, test drive it, make sure it's spinning smooth, and then you're okay. Now, we did all that to get back to turning a wine bottle stopper with some changes because these are little tricks you can do. I know you can. I know you can. I went back to Ronnie and got me another piece of 2x2. Two two. Yes, it is. It is yellow pine. Cheap. Home Depot 2 2 Ronnie knows it's not what you put in, it's what you get out that really matters. So, I got this from him, and it's three and a quarter inches long. And I'm gonna, it's drilled with 5 sixteenths hole in one end. And Ruth sells those drill bits for the right size. So if you get the mandrel on the bit, you've got it. Then I'm just going to thread it right on there. It's the beauty of this. It is so simple. Now it's holding on this. Right there. I'm going to, and remember I did move my head and my tailstock. 
I'm going to bring the live center up. I didn't move anything. I didn't force it. It just went up. That's, I don't want to force it. I don't want to twist this and have it kicking. I'm going to shape this down using my roughing gouge and then my skew. Right, right. Again, to raise it, I'm going to my reference mark on my, on my tool rest down here that tells me that that's about my average height. I'm going to do a test spin to make sure it was spinning right. And for this, I'm going to start with my three quarter inch D Way Tools rubbing duel. Put your shield down and protect your face. A nice smooth tool rest lets it move easier. We're round. I did all of that with a roughing gouge. Don't ever think that a roughing gouge is just made for roughing in. I got a really, really slick, great cut because this was sharpened on my 247 rake in my, my bench grinder and I sharpened around and I reduced those points coming back a little bit. Gave me a much more workable part. Now I've got it just about where I wanted it. I'm going to sharpen up my skew and go in and shape it again. When I think about what we're doing and how we're doing it, and look around the shop, this thing's a disaster. Uh, and every day I put more in the trash can that I can't use. I found that I've got a step center that's drilled. See it? It's got a, 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 a draw bar ring. But then I have this bottle stopper thing that they sell at one of the major crafts books. And it's got uh, one, two, three, four different quarter five, three, and a half, and they're made for doing it to uh, pull things for lamps. Well, not drill. But then you really can't go negative on a cut anyway, unless you're between centers, because you're going to knock it off a, a slip fit right here. So just sitting here dreaming, looking around, seeing what else is in here, this batch of stuff, because it all works really good. Shield down. Skew. It's good skew practice. I put in a new sharp edge on the skew using a diamond stone. A little lapping. Never went back to the grinder. I don't need to throw the tool on the floor. I just need to touch it up. Now, I have this piece right here. And I wish, let's see if I can get this camera to get out a little bit more. There we are. I hate to do that to you. My wife does this sometimes with the camera. It should make you seasick moving it like this. All right, come on, get in there. 
There we go. Now you see we're nice and smooth on the sides. We're running up there. There's a couple of flats up here in the, on, up on this spot. But I'm not worried about that yet. I want to fix this. How I'm going to fix it is pretty simple. I'm going to come take a parting tool or part it tool. This is a little thing put out by, I think it was Cindy Drozda. Really sharp little point. But you could do this with, hell, if you got a sharpened screwdriver, you can do it with a sharpened screwdriver. Or the smash diamond cutter or others. Fire up. Shields down. the miracle about that right no no that's just a, all those are just grooves just marks now we're going to get serious about this here we go piece of wire two balls on the end of it see it musical wire Now, I took that wire and I burned in those rings. Just put that mark, then I took the wire and put it right over the top of it and cooked them in. And there's a piece of musical wire I picked up at Hobby Lobby. That worked out fine. Slowed it back down a little bit. I'm gonna take some 180 grit paper just buff it off a little bit. I'm going to step up to 300, maybe 320, and I'm going to knock down the fuzz. Now this is essentially done, okay? I want to take the nub off you're doing back up the, the tail stock a little bit and get out of the way. See it's stopping. All right. Then I'm going to stabilize this by putting my hand underneath it and holding on to it. Shield up. Got that done. Drop my tool rest. I'm gonna touch it up a little bit, a little 220 paper. All right. I'm gonna stop the lathe and reposition my tool rest. Now, I'm gonna put the trunk and the base on this piece. Got it? Got it. I like to take this in steps. This has been tapered and we've done the rings. Before I cut on the base, which is going to weaken this top connection of the piece, I want to rub in a little sanding sealer. And this is 50-50 sanding sealer made by Deft. I'll show you the can in a moment and lacquer thinner. Why? Because it's on a lathe. It'll soak in really nice. 
that's a product. Whoop. There it is. This product. And that's my favorite sealer. I just put a little that sweetened it up a little bit. Only took a few drops. And I'll let it air a minute. I'm letting it air a little bit, and that set it up really nicely. I could go back and put two, three, four more coats on the I choose to how much I need to get it shiny. But now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the trunk and the base. Shields up. This is a little Richard Sorby tool. It's a one quarter inch or six millimeters. And it works really good. I can just touch it up my diamond stone to get it sharpened again. Had that to round this off a little bit. I'm gonna go with my three eighths inch deep fluted tool. No magic to this. It really isn't. This is a little project we ended up with. I have a nice heavy trunk because I have a 3 8 hole in the bottom of it. I have a little bit of a base, a little chamfer down there, a little chamfer at the top. This has all been done quickly with lightweight tools. Nothing special, nothing exotic. It's all tools you have in your shop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put some finish on that bottom and then get it off the lathe. Now, that's a relatively simple little project. Let's zoom in here. Let's see if we can do this. Put a zoom thing. Okay. That's, a, that's the one we just did. That's got the lines burned into it rather than cut into it. Really simple, easy to do. This has got the lines cut into it using a parting tool and they're a little bit more defined and just a step more. But some of, you, some of you turners might not be really comfortable with the parting tool, so I gave you an option. Um, and it's it's a viable option, it's easy to do. And part of this is, well, we've got to find the, oh, the reverse button. Yeah. Part of this is to just give you something simple. You can go out and shop, knock them out, and give them to the family. My dentist probably sitting there saying, what the hell are they doing? Those plastic teeth from Guam won't hold up to that. No, I didn't think they would. I'm going to take the cap off and then screw a standard, not a stand up, but a standard bottle stopper into it from Ruth. This, these are to finish two projects. Now, it took you a little bit, a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and remember, and I got help from this from Ronnie, these are scraps of 2x4 from Home Depot. So, quick math, <clears throat> throwing away 4 inches of block per, that gets me 16 blocks per, then times 2, it's 32 I got 32 pieces of lumber to make bottle stoppers for 88 cents. You might be able to beat that, but it's going to be hard. All right, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and I hope these tips and hints helped you a little bit today. Hope you get out, enjoy yourself in your shop, do something. And remember, everything you turn, somebody wants, and it's all going to make you feel good right there, right there.
Yeah. You take care as I go back to making shavings. <laughs>